key milestones for Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon on the way uphill. It's about a nine minute ride to orbit, and a few minutes after that is when we'll see Crew Dragon separate from the second stage and begin flying free on its own. Some of those other calls you'll hear upon liftoff are number and letter combinations. These mark different abort zones throughout the flight. The first two are 1A and 1B. This signifies they're in the first stage, and that will last until they're up to the very north of North Carolina. The next are 2A through 2E or 2 Echo. Those will come into play once the second stage kicks in. That lasts from the top of North Carolina all the way to the tip of Newfoundland in the northern Atlantic. There's also a spot we want to avoid in the northern Atlantic, and so you might hear the call Shannon or forward to Shannon. Of course, that's not to be confused with our crew member, Shannon Walker, today, but that actually refers to Shannon, Ireland. It means they would target off the coast of Ireland if they were later in that second stage and needed to abort. But that next call out we're listening for to the crew should come up at T minus 10 minutes that the crew displays those three panels in front of our astronauts will be configured for launch. Now just 10 minutes and 35 seconds to go until liftoff. Also, as John, I mentioned that stage two fuel load is complete. Stage one is at about 90%. Liquid oxygen load on the second stage is about 40%, and on the first stage, about 85%. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. And SpaceX, this is Dragon. Displays are configured for launch. Copy resilience. We're honored to have you as our crew as we begin operational missions to the ISS. Have an amazing trip and know that we are all for one. Thanks, Jay. And to all the people at NASA and SpaceX, by working together through these difficult times, you've inspired the nation, the world, and in no small, small part, the, uh, the name of this incredible vehicle, Resilience. And now it's time for us to do our part, crew one for all. Up y'all, thanks Hopper. That was the voice of Commander Mike Hopkins confirming those crew displays are configured and that T minus 10 minutes was another check for the Falcon 9 launch commit criteria. It was checked by some computers. It was the last check of a wide variety of the Falcon system data to make sure we are go. From here on, we continue to count down until T minus seven minutes when the pre-valves open. T-minus 8 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. As Liam mentioned, the next major event at T-minus 7 minutes, we will open the pre-valves. Currently, the Merlin engines on the first stage are isolated by valves that are between the propellant tanks and with the Merlin engines. We'll open the pre-valves. That'll allow us to begin passing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the inlet of the turbo pumps. That'll chill them down to get them ready for when we bring the pumps up to full speed at T minus two seconds. We want to make sure that the pumps are chilled so that there's not any opportunity for the liquid oxygen to possibly get uh, in contact with a warm pump and turn into gas, something you want to avoid on a turbo pump. Seven minutes and 40 seconds now to lift off. We're still watching those fuel levels tick up and in the first stage, we're almost at 100% of that densified kerosene. As we mentioned, second stage is full. First stage fueling should be complete for that RP-1 at about T minus six minutes. Standing by for pre-valve opening.
stage one engine chill has started. And there's the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. Indicates that we are opening the pre valves. Liquid oxygen now beginning to flow slowly through the turbo pumps on the Merlin 1D first stage engines. Next call out should be in about 30 seconds from now. We'll be looking for stage one RP load complete. That's the densified kerosene, that fuel on the first stage, already full on the second stage, and we'll still be loading liquid oxygen up until about two minutes prior to liftoff on the second stage. Standing by for that fuel call. Stage one fuel load is complete. Okay, right on time, and a great view of Dragon. Sitting on top of the Falcon 9 as we're continuing to load liquid oxygen onto both the first and second stages. The RP-1 kerosene fuel is now completely loaded on both stage one and stage two. All continues to go well, just under six minutes to launch. In about 30 seconds, we'll enter terminal count. Dragon's onboard computers will take control of the vehicle. Both fuel on first and second stage is complete and liquid oxygen loading continues with the second stage at about 80%, first stage at 95%. Something else you might notice is water rushing the pad shortly before liftoff. That's to suppress the sound and keep any sound from imparting a load on Crew Dragon as it prepares to lift off. Dragon is in configure for terminal count. Dragon is on internal power. Falcon 9 propellant tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Good confirmation that Dragon is in on, in, on internal power. And now we'll be looking for a, ma a major milestone before we uh, launch today. That'll be the strong back retract. John, you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, Leah, if we get a close-up of the uh, Dragon at second stage. Strongback is retracting. We've heard the call out, Strongback retracting. That's a two-step sequence. First, there are clamp arms around the very top of the second stage. You can see one of them just above the gaseous uh, oxygen vapors coming out of the second stage. Those arms will open up, and then in just inside of T minus four minutes, once the arms are released, we'll begin to retract the Strongback alongside the vehicle It'll move back two degrees in position, and by about T minus three and a half minutes, we ought to be finished with that. The strong back will retract to 45 degrees away from the rocket once we hit T zero as part of the liftoff sequence. And at T minus three minutes, we'll Right now, we're waiting for the retract. And there you can see the strong back is beginning to move away from the vehicle. And it looks like we are just about into the required pre-launch position, just a couple degrees away from the Falcon 9 and the Dragon capsule. But right now, T minus three minutes, eight seconds, everything continues to be go on Dragon and Falcon 9. Currently standing. Dragon is in terminal count. And Dragon is in terminal count, and we are standing by to hear that stage one liquid oxygen loading is complete. Stage, stage two one locks load is complete. And there we have it, and stage two should finish shortly after at about two minutes prior to liftoff. So now the last major event is finished liquid oxygen loading on stage two. Wraps up at about T minus two minutes. Then at about T minus a minute and a half, we have to drain back and vent down the liquid line that goes up the strong back alongside the Falcon 9. If you see a large white cloud about midway down around the rocket, that's normal. That's again, just the gaseous oxygen hitting the warm, moist Florida air. Stage 
stage two lock float is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. And good calls that stage two liquid oxygen load is complete. That means we have full fuel on the first and second stages, that densified kerosene, and we're full of the Dragon oxidizer. Liquid oxygen on the first and second stage as well. Now just a minute and 20 seconds until liftoff today. And as you can hear those sounds, like Soichi Noguchi said, the vehicle is alive. Coming up in 10 seconds, we'll look to hear that the Dragon is in countdown and Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon to countdown. Left gets is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and it's now controlling. 50 seconds now until liftoff. That FTS you heard is flight termination. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, this is resilient. Roger, go. Go for launch, and at 37 seconds, the International Space Station flying over Dragon Kennedy SpaceX, Space Center. All for one, crew one for all. Crew Dragon poised to go catch it. Twenty seconds till liftoff. E minus fifteen seconds. Okay, nine is configured for flight. N nine eight seven six five four three two one zero. Ignition. contains humanity when we explore as one for all. And one e propulsion is nominal. That's the word we want to hear. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Stage one is preparing to throttle down. This is in preparation for max Q, which is maximum aerodynamic pressure. Stage one, throttle down. There's that call out for throttle down. Power and telemetry continue to be nominal for the vehicle, now traveling at 262 meters per second. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Uh, the Falcon 9 is supersonic, and we will be passing through Max Q here shortly, the largest structural load during ascent. Max Q. And there's that call out. That Falcon has passed through stage Max one Q. Bravo. One Bravo. And we've Project just one entered Bravo. stage one Bravo abort mode. That's going to take them through the end of the first stage burning just before second stage activates off the coast of North Carolina. T plus one minute and 40 seconds into flight. Dragon and Falcon 9 traveling 709 yeah, meters per second. Started. That call that MVAC chill is underway, the Merlin vacuum engine. Now with the call out of MVAC D chilling, similar to what we saw in the first stage Merlin engines, the second stage engine being prepared for its ignition coming up in just over 30 seconds from now. We're a half a minute away from three quick events in rapid succession. We're going to get main engine cut off. The nine Merlin engines will throttle down and then shut down. We're going to get stage separation. Stage one throttle down. And then ignition of the second stage engine. We've begun the throttle down in preparation for stage separation. Alpha. Stage separation confirmed. And you see that stage separation has confirmed. There goes that MVAC engine. Stage two, crew one is now on their way to the International Space Station.
On the right side of your screen, you see stage two continuing to burn. Over on the left-hand side is stage one preparing for its return to Earth. Now, currently on the left side, you can't make out much. Uh, it's a couple hours after sunset in Florida, but the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. The first stage is now unpowered, but with the velocity it had, it continues to coast up to an apogee before it begins to descend back into Earth's atmosphere. Now, as we watch, maybe we'll see the lights of Florida or the eastern seaboard in the background, but otherwise, there's not going to be much to see. On the right-hand side... Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. You can hear the call out. Trajectory is nominal. Bermuda, nominal trajectory. And we've heard call out Bermuda. That means Bermuda ground station has the signals from the second stage of the Dragon and Falcon 9. We're still continuing as stage two burns to listen for those abort zones. We are now in 2A through 2E to Echo, taking us up over the Northern Atlantic. Right now you can see the second stage engine glowing with this standard uh, red uh, that we have come to uh, see over all these missions, indicates everything's looking good. Power on the MVAC-D engine continues to run at 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of outer space. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. And trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. And we hear the, the reply from the crew acknowledging we have a nominal trajectory. Dragon made it to the Falcon 9 second stage, heading into the low Earth orbit, where Dragon will then separate and begin its trip the rest of the way to the space station. We'll be looking for SECO, second stage engine cutoff, coming up at 8 minutes and 48 seconds after launch today. So about three and a half minutes from now, Dragon and Falcon 9, second stage, currently flying 2,979 meters per second. Now currently the first stage has begun its descent. It is through Apogee. It's beginning to come back down where it... Uh, Coming up in another couple of minutes, we will have the entry burn, where we begin to slow down the Dragon first stage. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Another call out, another nominal trajectory, just what we love to hear. That voice you're hearing on board Dragon, that's Commander Mike Hopkins speaking for our four-person crew as they continue their journey. Now six minutes and 12 seconds after liftoff. Trajectory still nominal. And Leah, you can see on the indicator altitude, 201 kilometers. Uh, we're now beginning to essentially level out and pick up velocity to get us into low Earth orbit. A little under one minute from the ignition for the entry burn on first stage. And we're about two minutes Dragon away. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Great news, now seven minutes after launch. Second stage engine continues to burn, everything looking good. And we'll see that continue to burn for another one minute in about 38 seconds. Right now on stage two, the crew's getting about uh, a little more than two and a half Gs of acceleration. First stage preparing to ignite for the stage entry two FTS is saved. And we've got ignition of the entry burn, center engine, followed by the other two restart engines. First stage now getting ready to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is about a 29-second burn, and it's designed to slow the vehicle way down. We're going to shed about 70% of the velocity of that dropping first stage by the time this landing burn completes. I should say by the time the entry burn completes. 
which is now over. First stage on target for the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Meanwhile, we're watching second stage getting close to getting into orbit. That's right, we've got about 30 stage seconds more. internal guidance. Now just about 20 seconds more of stage two continuing to burn until we see second stage engine cutoff or SECO. We'll coast for a few minutes afterward to allow the rates in motion Shannon. to start. Roger, there, Shannon. There's that call for Shannon. That's Shannon, Ireland, an abort zone, but it looks like we continue smoothly to orbit today. Impact shutdown. And we've got shutdown of the second stage engine on time. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orb insertion. Launch escape system is disarmed. And SpaceX copies. And Leah, the words we like to hear a nominal orbit insertion. That's right, John. Nominal orbit insertion, as we mentioned, stage two. Oh, looks like some action on stage one. And I believe we've had a touchdown on the drone ship. We've got stage one has touched down on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. But now the more important news, second stage is in orbit right where we want, right on time, and we're getting ready for our next major activity, which will be Dragon spacecraft separation. <laughs> now, currently on the second stage, we are essentially venting pressure, purging the engine out, making sure everything is quiet in preparation. Take a look, that's inside Crew Dragon right now, our Crew 1 crew now coasting in low Earth orbit, still attached to that second stage. In just a couple of minutes, we should see that second stage separate and Crew Dragon will be flying free. Malia, the mission timer shows 90 seconds to Dragon separation. Currently, Dragon is flying at 27,000 kilometers an hour. plus 11 minutes since liftoff today, waiting on that second stage separation. But as you can see, our astronauts from left to right, Shannon Walker, Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, and Suichi Noguchi, now on their way to the International Space Station. First trip to space for Victor Position Glover. Of signal Newfoundland. And that call out acquisition of signal in Newfoundland. That means the Newfoundland ground station is now receiving telemetry from Dragon. This view inside Mission Control Hawthorne. Teams continuing to monitor the vehicle. Now traveling at almost 27,000 kilometers an hour. Ten seconds to Dragon separation. And separation confirmed. You can see that second stage departing. Crew Dragon leaving it behind. Separation confirmed. Now 12 minutes, 25 seconds into today's flight. Our next thing we'll be looking for is nose cone deploy. Our hooks will start to open on the nose cone and reveal those forward thrusters underneath.
13 minutes into today's mission. The view on the right-hand side of your screen coming from Crew Dragon. We had that short look at the second stage as it departed. That second stage will burn up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX, we see nominal service section Draco checkouts and the humidifier activation. And SpaceX, this is Dragon, we copy all and we see the same. Confirmation from teams on the ground and the crew. You can see them monitoring those three display panels, monitoring their journey to the International Space Station and where they are in the world right now, or over the world, I should say. Well, we're in 14 minutes, 25 seconds since it was a great liftoff. Everything happened. We had a normal, a normal insertion into low Earth orbit. You saw Dragon separate. We got the Draco checkouts were good. And right now we're hearing the nose cone hooks are opening up. Everything is happening right per the procedure. And we've got crew on successfully on orbit. So with that, Let's head over to our counterparts at Kennedy Space Center. Marie, how was that launch for you all there on the ground? Oh my gosh, John, it just it <laughs> just took our breath away. I mean, we could just turn right around yeah. in our seats and watch. Uh, we got up uh, away from the desk to get a better look. And then we actually could see the booster uh, coming back down. Yeah, that was outstanding, outstanding. And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> High five, we're like high five and through the shield yeah, here. High five. Uh, my husband texted me a picture of my daughter watching lift off. It was just, I'm, I'm emotional, um, just yeah. Yeah, it, seeing that. And, and we and went on the first attempt. How often does that happen it in space flight? As it should. I'm very happy. Uh, you know, it has been a long day, but the just to be able to stand there and actually and feel the rocket pounding yes. the air around you was just. It was just incredible. And then looking at the light too long, I couldn't see the MVAC ignition. So <laughs> <laughs> I still have spots in my eyes. And then the views inside the the capsule too with the four of them, you know, yeah. looking kind of mellow, but you can see Victor's kind of letting his arms do a little bit of the floaty yeah. thing. I bet he cannot wait yeah. to get out of his seat. Uh, well, <laughs> he's gonna get a chance yeah. to here, here shortly. So he's officially on his way on his first space flight. So Incredible. Victor, Mike, Shannon, and Soichi are now on course to arrive at the International Space Station just tomorrow, Monday, November 16th, around 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to stay live on air for continuous live coverage along their entire ride to station. Uh, though our coverage here at Kennedy Space Center will conclude, uh, we're going to turn it over to the teams in Hawthorne and Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-1 mission, all the way through hatch opening and a welcome ceremony for the crew. Now, for those of you watching online uh, via YouTube, take a look at the description below the video. There you'll find the new link for our Crew-1 rendezvous phase, uh, and we'll be continuing live coverage at that new location shortly. But if you're watching on NASA TV, like my parents, uh, you won't notice a thing and your coverage will continue. That's right. And as you follow along, uh, we also invite you to tune into a post-launch news conference at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on NASA TV, uh, where NASA and SpaceX will take questions live. And in addition to NASA TV, of course, you can always follow along on Twitter at, at NASA and NASA.gov for continuous mission updates. We thank you all so much for watching. Uh, to all of our commentators, Nicole, special thanks to you My for being pleasure, here. My pleasure, ladies. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Oh, please, <laughs> yes. Well, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. Um, here now are some highlights from the incredible journey that's just begun. Here's our first live look inside the suit-up room. Crew Dragon Commander Mike Hopkins was born in Lebanon, Missouri, Pilot Victor Glover is a native of Pomona, California. And Mission Specialist Shannon Walker is from Houston, Texas. 
Mission Specialist Soichi Noguchi is from Yokohama, Kananagawa, Japan. And here they come, walking down the hall. Oh. Everyone's Aww. looking quite peppy there. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> They're looking for people. They're looking for the people that have helped them all along the way, too, and want to make eye contact. Yeah. Here they come, the Crew-1 astronauts now beginning their journey to the launch pad ahead of this historic mission to the International Space Station. This is CORE on countdown one for timeline. The crew is departing for the pad on schedule. This is Chase Car, so you can be along with the crew every step of the way. It's kind of like the pre-flight, right? The walk around your vehicle before you get in and fly? I love this shot. Yeah. You know, when this was being designed, it was definitely a forward-thinking design. And you can see uh, on your screen the crew beginning the ingress process already. Uh, the, they are checking to make sure the suits are ready. They're helping them uh, connect the umbilicals. They're buckling them in. And Dragon SpaceX hatch is closed. Five. 